Okay. Long play training day. Just trying to prepare for the tournament coming up in about eight weeks time. I've put myself into the major section. I've never done that ever in my life. Um, as you know, um, my rating is like, was it 1360 at the minute? In the standard play over the board. So this is an over the board co tournament coming up in about eight weeks time. And normally I'm in the minor section. So now I'm throwing myself into the major section, which is the under 1950 section. So I'm one of the lowest rated players there. I think there's a, a person who hasn't got a rating on uh, just underneath me. And I'm 13. They've got me as 1352. But I think with my recent um, performance, I'm actually 1360 now at this moment. So, yeah, one of the, bot one of the bottom ones. But I'm not feeling phased by the opponent's ratings per se. Now I'm just focusing on, well, let's see if we can go in there and do a little bit of a performance we've done the secret envelope type thing which shows you my goals for the actual tournament you know and i'm not expecting anything major from it so it's only a small goal it's a prediction and uh, so we're keeping that on there just to remind us what our focal point is on in terms of the results from this tournament if we get anything higher than that, then that really is a bonus. I am not expecting anything more than what we've put in the predictions. I'll be lucky if I get half of what I've put in the predictions. So I'm being realistic with myself. The players are really good and they're really strong. And so we just want to try and go in there and be as strong as we can be and really just enjoy the games. I think I feel a lot better when I'm playing the games, when I'm enjoying the games and I'm just getting a feel for the game right from the start. The key thing is your opening and if you mess up your opening, then you're chasing your tail for a good hour, two hours, three hours, however, however the long the game goes. So I, in my head, I'm thinking if we can manage the opening, simple direct moves to remove pieces from the ball strategically, and it's that key word strategically, taking a pawn is it improving my position or is it improving their end game pawn position you know am i doubling my pawns in the wrong situation because we don't mind doubling pawns for our rooks giving them access but that doubling the pawns might be a weakness so we have to kind of refrain from looking for the rooks owning the files if it's doubling our pawns because we have to look at the end game that is a key thing that I've got to keep pushing into my brain. Anyway, today we're going to go through, well, I'm going to go through my daily games that I've got on here and um, just see if I can stretch my mind, expand my mind. And I don't win all of them. There's some I've just resigned because I, I'm, I don't think that they're, I think they're a lot stronger than what they are pertaining to be so i've resigned those games there's no point in going through that pain it's like i mentioned earlier it's like if you do a wrong opening or whatever it is then you have to go through the pain of one two three hours of um sitting around knowing that you've lost um in these particular games here and uh, there were certain moves that the player had made and i thought mm, that's not really of this level um i'm an experienced player and um, so i thought thank you very much i'll, I'll resign the game and you have to be open to that because there's no point in carrying on because it's just going to hurt my brain because it's impossible for me to gain any advantage in those types of games. I want to play humanized play. So we're going to have a look at this game here and we've got the little arrows here so we can go backwards and forwards. So when I go into the games, because the daily games, the three days of move games type things, um, you can forget the thread of what you were planning to do because I've got about is it 40 odd games on here and so let's have a look so they've moved the knights we brought the queen up attacking the knight 
still wanting to keep around the king area. But in this particular game, I'm thinking I might be getting strangulated. I'm trying to fashion some sort of way of winning their queen, but they're winning the tempo. And I'm assuming they've moved the queen. Oh, no, they've attacked with the bishop. So we've moved the king out of the way. They've moved their queen. We've attacked their knights. Their queen is attacking our king. We do have the pawn push here. So those types of things I would have seen. Don't think they lose much tempo. We push here just to block. Or we bring the knight out attacking the bishop at the same time. His knight's going to be moving. Can move here to attack the rook. King can't come to attack because the bishop's there. So the rook has to move. Knight. Mm, yeah, can come here. But the queen can take. No, it can't because the bishop's there. So the knight's probably going to be doing like a little bit of a... Because it's not going here because it'll get taken. It's not going there because it'll get taken. So it will be jumping here. So we push to defend or we bring the knight to defend. If we push to defend with the pawn, it does take away that space for protection here. And that's potentially where the knight is going to jump. So it's probably best bringing the knight here. It's attacking the bishop. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to bring the knight here. And their next move is obviously going to be moving the knight there. Okay, we're going to have to just live with that one. So where do I go for moving my move? Go down the bottom. Give it a tick so it jumps on to the next one. So in this particular game, so playing these sorts of games like these, this will probably send many people to sleep. Not in, they're not interested in long play thinking, long play anything. It's all quick, 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 quick. But this is the only way, well, this is one of many ways of improving for me, my personal over the ball type chess thinking. So let's move back a few more. Brought the bishop up. Looks like we're castling. Captured. Okay, so my main concern for this area is we've got our king here. But are they going to start making inroads into attacking our... Obviously not just yet, but do they have sights of bringing the queen here to attack here with the knight still being here? And that's a genuine concern. So how do they get rid of this knight which is protecting this area? potential for the pawns pushing down we do have a pawn blocking excuse me they'll be wanting to get their bishop out as well but is it doing so much damage key thing is this queen coming here and attacking here that's the kind of pattern that i'm seeing also the troublesome pawns pushing down as well just to open up the king's space a little bit so little things like that looks like we've got pieces giving our king company but the weakness is this pawn area here and it's got potential for attacking down on here so i need to be thinking how do i get to close that off so we could just attack the knight see what it wants to do get it out of the way is it just jumping back here or is it jumping here blocking the queen it's not going to go there so it's got options of jumping here and jumping here or not doing anything at all but for me i think i'm always conscious that you know i've got not got my knights out so do we have time to bring the knight out Maybe we should, but it's just jumping to a square where it's not doing much. I suppose we've got potential for attacking and attacking here. But should we just shoot the knight first anyway, just to say, look, we know what you're planning. Get it out of the way. Bishop's protecting the pawn. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's much doing there. We've castled. Just need to get that off the side. I am actually going to hit the knight with the pawn. So like I say, I don't think they're coming here. They're not going to take, take, take. Boom. Now nah, they'll just go back or go back here. Maybe looking to sit here with this little outpost thing. Yeah, I don't see any problems with that. Let's push that pawn. Let's give that a little tick. All right. 
okay so their pawn is attacking our bishop so we just need to just eye up the situation we're taking because we're trying to open up space in the center as usual and now we're x-raying through to the queen with the potential for them attacking so we could keep the um x-ray through obviously then they're going to be pushing with the pawn here then we're going to bring this here and then the pawn could potentially go and attack the knight and where's the knight going? Knight's got space to go. It could come around to be a menace towards the king area. Let's have a look at how that's going to look. Bring the bishop here. Say the pawn attacks again. Bring it here. Excuse me. Bring it here. Boom, boom, boom. 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 They might not attack the knight straight away, but let's assume they do there. So that pawn is on here, bishop's here, knight could come here. Could come here to sit here because there'll be nothing troubling it. Obviously it's got the dark square bishop and it does have its own knights as well. But I think it's it's causing some sort of confusion in front of their king area, as well as my own. So let's just bring the bishop back. I can't see anything else. My tunnel vision is focused solely on here because the bishop's being attacked. We have the option of taking, but he just replicates with his knight. Sometimes that's not a bad thing. I just remember an over the board game I had many moons ago where um, I sat for ages and ages about whether to take the knight or not. I didn't take the knight, and that knight ended up winning the game for them. Um, different situation, different position, but it, those sort, sorts of things stick in your brain. So if we did take, he just replicates. So it's one less piece on the board, but he could take with his queen. My queen is stuck in the back. And then he does have the cheap thing going on with his queen coming here. Options and choices, options and choices. It's not very often I do take the knight if it is in a situation like this. Maybe we need to just switch it up a bit and just think simple. Because this is arty, yeah, because we're not doing anything with we're not taking pieces off the board but there's just strategy involved in that in that i'm giving my king company which is the thing we've covered and we're also looking to be a little bit of a menace in front of their own king but they're still going to have pieces on the board same as what we have i'm going for the strategy I'm going for the strategy and bring the bishop back. Let's give that a tick. So these are the conversations I'm going to be having with myself over the board and the, in the recent seasons games. It's the same things that I've been doing, having those sorts of conversations with myself. And it's not saying I've found the best ideal positions if you've seen the games I'm looking back. So this one here, we brought the knight out this is pretty straightforward and they've got a nice little attack going here with their queen and the bishop and stuff i'm hoping that that's like losing them a bit of movement time on the board because it doesn't look like they're doing anything with that i think they'll be wanting to get the knight in here to um make it look like they're doing something active so i think simply bringing the bishop here so that we can go and castle if we have time to go and castle uh, should be okay this knight's coming in Attacking the bishop, whichever we can castle, queen can take. I don't really see too much of an issue with that. Let's keep it simple. All right. The danger with doing daily games as well, and if you're doing loads of daily games, you know, you've got like 40, 60, whichever going upwards, is you can end up getting into just rattling, up, rattling them off, just like bang, 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 just making a move and not really looking at the what you planned. 
in this particular game I did plan on taking this pawn at some point and but I thought it was too early yeah just going back just to memorize myself so we captured they captured we brought the knight up it's looking to att potentially attack the pawn but they've attacked so we can take their pawn off the board I was umming and ahhing about do we take because we're on their queen but it didn't feel like we were going to win out so they've still not protected the pawn and in my head I'm thinking is it poison and uh, do they have like a diagonal through or something you know with the bishop coming here knight takes it's on the queen queen has to defend itself unless of course it wants to get taken but the queen can just drop to here yeah and then he's got like the battery thing going here and then there's not much that's stopping that so the knight will get taken so that's why i've not i'm not thinking of taking this this is where they want to be so should our next move be this first and then i bet you any money maybe they're not gonna they might go here with the bishop protecting because the knight's protecting there so I think that's what I'm plumping for. Just pushing this here first. They may then look to try and they may then look to try and get rid of the pawn by pushing here. We do have the queen opposite the king. So if it all did kick off, maybe the rook could put pressure on. X-ray through. So I'm not seeing too much wrong with that. That's where Bishop isn't coming here because the bishop will take because it's got support from the queen so let's lock that one in okay this one i'm getting a little bit um what's the word now with this one it's about just trying to get my king castle safety i think i'm getting a bit too busy with the attacks okay so we could take the knight off the board or just bring the bishop here or bring it here or bring it here back again no problems either way i mean if we come here but not i don't think they'll do that because we'll just do the on pass on thing so i think that's really a simple one of just bringing the bishop here X-raying through and through. But again, they're not going to be too concerned about that. The knight's probably just going to move somewhere, like maybe here. Well, maybe not there because we take we're going to check on the king, so they'll lose the knight. So if we're looking to move somewhere. No, bishop will take it. Okay, let's move the bishop here, keep the X-ray through to the king. It looks strategically sound. Poor pawn here is um, a little bit on its own. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven, but it's a bit misplaced. I don't think that's gonna last too long, that pawn. We need to improve our position. We're ready to castle, they've got two pieces to move with the castling from either side yeah let's just bring the bishop back so let's go back one or two or three here because this one's looking a little bit delicate with the bishops of opposite color which you would think probably would be a draw but we've brought the bishop back they're now going look like they're going to be putting pressure onto this pawn we're attacking their bishop bishops attack the rook rooks come defending the pawn and they've pushed down now maybe looking to do this but maybe i'm not too worried about that because they'll lose a pawn okay could bring the rook here now attacking the bishop not much that's going to happen to the bishop he could go here and attack i don't think they'll do that though they'll either bring it back here or bring it here 
although we're blocking the rook here, so I think they'll go here. Problem they've got is, I think they'll just push the pawn. If we come and attack this because this pawn is behind the p uh, bishop, so they'll lock the bishop into the center. Ah. So if they lock the bishop into the center, so if we push this pawn now, I suppose they can still push down anyway. And the bishop just comes back and protects the pawn and it's locked itself into the center. Hmm. So I'm looking at the end picture of it all. This pawn is obviously getting hit, so we need to keep protection there. Maybe just bring the king here supporting this pawn. Right, so I don't think we're doing that because they'll get that. But if they did that, then we can push there. But then if they did do that, take and then the rook takes. So maybe we need to get here first. Do they still do this? If they do that, then we take. Then the bishop takes. Then they're on this pawn. So we have to move this pawn. If we want the rook to get into the game. So we have to push. Which gives them time to move their rook down, attacking our bishop. Bishop can go and attack the pawn. It's not really a good thing, though, is it? Pawn can move, etc. Hmm. 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 Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. We don't want it locking in there, do we? I'm just inclined to think, well, we need to just see how it looks if we did push this. If we push that, maybe they're pushing onto the bishop, pawn takes. Rook takes with a check. Rook takes. Well, it could get a bit messy, couldn't it? There's lots of ifs, buts, and maybes. Mm -hmm. Just attack the pawn, give them something to think about, pushes down onto a dark square. But he's still going to lock himself in here. Hmm. I think we're going to have to push this pawn because this locking in situation is just going to get a bit mad. Push here, maybe. No, it's not going to do that because the bishop will take. Let's lock this in. Keep coming back to that. Let's lock that in. Okay. So one of the key things as well is um, doing this sort of exercise like this because I've only got the minimal screen on, you know, minimized. I can't see if the, the player has made a move in one of the games that we've just done. Because sometimes I just like to do one move in each of the games and then shut off. Whereas if they're popping in and making a move, then I'm going to stay on here for a while. So this one here, I'm feeling the pressure of trying to get these pawns here. Let's count first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five. So we're down two pawns, but we're up a minor piece. Always thinking of trying to get the knight in here. It's just that he does win the pawn. Okay, let's see what moves we did. Right, okay, so pawn here. Queen's coming up, attacking their pawn here. Drops the pawn. We're pushing up, trying to just get a bit of disturbance. And hoping maybe they were going to take or something, you know, just to give up, to split these pawns up but they're not having any of that. We do have three pieces attacking this pawn. We've got one, excuse me, we've got one, two, three. So that again, the position that we were looking for was if they did push down, if they did take, we do have potential to have three pieces on here because I don't think they could get a third attacker in. But does it work for us? Yeah. It felt like it when I've done the calculation before. We've got the three on there. 
They don't have to take. This is the thing. They don't have to do anything. If the rook does take, maybe go with the queen. Does the queen take? If the queen takes, the rook takes. And then the rook comes across and supports this pawn. This rook is here. Does he have one of those funky things where if he pushes down, then the rook is blocked? That's the thing I don't like. Take. Pushes. No, that would be wrong for them. Take and take and take, yeah. So let's take with the rook and see how the land lies. Yeah. Can't say any fairer than that. Let's go here. There's no checks on our king that I can see straight off. It's just the move order thing. Let's lock that in. Okay. This one, again, looks like it should just drill out to be in a draw. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven pawns. And position on the board, the knight's looking to try and... I was thinking they were trying to get around here at some point. We sorted that out. Let's just do the moves again. Just pushing, pushing. Yeah. So what's the knight wanting to do here? I mean, we're wanting to probably get our king into the game a little bit more defending. But what is this knight's um, intentions? It can come here. And this is why we're probably wanting the king to come here. Well, it can, but it'll get taken. But maybe it's not doing that. Is it looking to support the pawn? What's the whirlwind? Is he blasting down? So you have to... Or is he making space for this pawn to do something? Because it doesn't look like there's anywhere that this knight is going. So maybe they're vacating so that this pawn can at least do some support of some sort. If it does that though, we can take this pawn because we've got two rooks on there. So in the meantime, I don't know if I want to bring the knight back up there because I think that's where it came from, isn't it? Yeah, that's where it came from. So we brought the knight up and down to give the king some support. We can swing it across now and sit it here. Bait the pawn down. And Bobsy Runkle will get a rook. Yep, so that's the idea, I think. That's what I was kind of thinking. It seems fairly straightforward. I'm not too sure what this knight is doing here. So I'm going to bring the knight up with the idea of, as we mentioned, just bringing it to here, to here. I'm going to lock that in. Oh, it's not coming up. There we go. Okay. Um... See, as you can see, it's still showing 20 on there. So somebody's kicking in their games. But none of them are looking familiar at the minute in terms of the ones we've just done. So we'll see. I'm sure we'll remember. Let's have a look. So this is another Bishops of Opposite Colour. So again, it should kind of peter out to be a bit of a draw. But we've shown a bit of, a bit of menace with our Bishop. And we're attacking the pawn and putting a check on the king to get another pawn off the board here. Their rook is now facing this area. And we put a check on the king and we're going to win the rook. Then he brought his pawn across and that was the big upset. So then we're potentially looking at doubling the rooks here. Keep it simple. Pawn can't move. And the only other piece that can come in and defend would be the rook coming here. Pushing the pawn down type thing. Yep. So I think we'll go with that simplicity of looking for doubling the rooks. We'll lock that in. There's no point putting it here. The pawn's just going to push down onto it. Nothing else. No. 
it's pretty straightforward. So we've locked that in. Oh, and this one here, I think um, I'm not going to get what I want out of this one. This player looks a little bit strong in terms of the way they're moving the pieces. Let's just go back here. So it's a little bit delicate. I'm just trying to find something in the mantra that we can pull out in this particular game. Rooks in the center of the board. They don't have any plays there unless of course it's to their advantage. That's what I'm thinking. But now he's got support with his queen, but the rook is still in the center of the board. How can I get to it? So that's where we're currently at. Trying to focus something to get onto this. And the magic square would be this and this. But, I mean, he can move anyway and he can get away. The pawn is just going to drop to stop the knight from doing that. So I don't want to waste the move. So if we did go here and then the pawn drops, do we just bring the knight here so it's like repositioned? Or, I was thinking, are we going to look to double up? He simply drops the pawn. So we're kind of almost forced to take, and then he takes. So he's still winning the centre, even if we bring the rook here to support. So, idea, I'm going to throw that in. I'm going to lock that in. And there's probably a better move of some sort, but that was the kind of plan we were sort of looking at. Um, we, we know that there's pressure coming down the centre here. Our king is stuck in the edge. If their bishop gets to sit here, then we've got problems because the king is there. So, going to bring the knight up. We'll lock that in. Yes, I'm playing him again. Yeah, so this is the same player. Um kind of strong so with this one I was oh let's have a look I was attempting to try and maneuver their knights so we put a check on the king and we're thinking of potentially attacking their rook see how that lies how many pawns one two three four five six one, two, three, four, five, six. I've got doubled on this side. So we're taking, trying to make space, and um, I was thinking maybe they were going to take or something like that. Uh, but they pushed past. So then I'm thinking, oh, can this pawn magically go up? But this knight is in the way at the minute. So we move the king across, trying to, because the knight is actually on our pawn. So I was surprised I didn't actually take that at some point. But um, so now they've pushed down. So we can do on pass on. Is that going to be a, a good thing for us or not? I think it's going to be something. His knight is still going to get a check on our king. But it's some activity. And I think the rook is going to be putting a check on the king. So it looks like we're going to be just dropping down a little bit here. So I don't think there's any wrong positionally with that. Let's just take. It doesn't have a magic knight fork, only that one there. So I'm going to lock that in. So we're locking that in. Right, let's have a look at this one. We have not done this one yet. It's still showing 20 there, cracking. <laughs> but if I get to ones that we've already done, I'm stopping because it could be here all day. And my voice is going. Let's have a look at this. This is um, starting out. This is just opening stage at the minute. Uh, doing a bit of fancy dancing with the bishop. I don't really like being fancy dancing with the bishop. You know, I should be taking stuff. But at the same time, I've got a practice strategy. You know, I'm thinking, okay, longer term. He's not going to go and get castled, but really the bishop's not going to stay on the board that long. That's what's going on in the back of my head. But, you know, sometimes you have to try because sometimes they don't. Maybe the bishop's going to stay on there for a long time. And if it does, then it's going to stop the king from castling short. 
So the knights come in, it's attacking our knight, so we can take the knight, the pawn takes, and um, they run our knight. So we can farm the knight up here. It's also targeting this, but it's targeting the pawn as well. The bishop's got the support on this area, so if the knight went in here, I'd either get the queen or the rook. So they're going to have to do something about that. And in any event, I think they're probably just going to attack our bishop. Yep, so we're going to go here like this, attacking the pawn. I think this pawn is just going to attack the bishop. But the pawn doesn't have any support, so we could just take it back. So I think there's nothing wrong with this manoeuvre. I'm locking it in. Okay, and do, 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 do. let's have a look at this situation. Now, this is, I could feel my brain going quiet then. And this is the stage where I would go into automatic pilot and I would just flash through the moves and then I'd just make a move without actually doing any calculations. And that's where the downhill slide would go, where basically you'd be losing games that you should not have been losing. You know, and that's because we've done so many already, you know, so we should really just stop, take a break. Yeah, and I think that's what we're going to do. All right, so we'll take a break on this one and then we'll, we'll come back in a few minutes. So what do we want to do with this thing? It's terrible when you feel like you think you've got something but really I don't have anything and I feel like I'm gonna to have to do some sort of waiting move. This knight's looking to jump around here. It's definitely looking to jump there, attacking our rook and the pawn. So we may as well bring this pawn up here as highlighted. Yeah, so it's gonna come here with his uh, knight. We bring our rook back down. Mmm, fancy night business. Oh, I can't, there's nothing else that I can do in this push. It's even worse though, if we push, then he just goes and attacks the night rook anyway. And the pawn. But the pawn is then protected by the rook, but then the rook would have to move. Yeah, that wouldn't work at all, because the knight's going here. So I think, we're, ooh, hold on one second. We're locking the pawn here. Then he hits us. Where's the knight going? Knight can come here. And it can go here. To come here. Yeah, let's lock in this pawn. There's nothing much going there. We're giving them the power with this knight. Let's go. Let's give that a tick. And... So seven, so we're just going to do seven more, no matter what that shows on there, we'll just do seven more, so six after this one. Okay, so we're up a minor piece at the moment, it doesn't mean we've won anything, and um, looks like we're pawn up. So we're just moving the king up a little bit, capturing and potentially just moving the king up, stopping the space for the king. Just leaving the bishop there and then maybe bringing the bishop up at some point. Yeah, makes sense. Let's just push the king up. Let's lock that in. Okay, what we got here, this is just starting out. So again, I'm trying to focus on, not saying I'm doing it right, but I'm trying to focus on the, the initial the initial moves, your first move, your second move, your third move, they're so key and important uh, in actually starting your game. Uh, you might be good at end games, but to actually get to your end game, I do believe you have to have some sort of decent starting knowledge and then also the transition through into your mid game, through to your end game type situation. You have to have some sort of good knowledge and then practicing maybe better manoeuvres to get you into those better positions. 
So it does start right from the start. I know some players will probably say you don't really need to focus so much on openings, just you know, practice your end games, all that sort of stuff. Um, but really and truly, the first few moves of the game will set the game. You know who's basically winning, really. So we've gone basic and we've brought the bishop out and taken the knight off the board. So it looks like we're going for a bit of simple direct moves to remove pieces from the board and doubling the pawns because it's given them some devastation so that's why we've gone for taking it off the board but as usual my brain always goes well doubling the pawns doesn't mean it's a weakness blah 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 but got to look at both sides of the coin yeah there's points where doubling the pawns is not too bad and there's points where doubling the pawns you can treat it as a bit of a weakness so the play the games that i play when i'm playing quick um, most of the opponents they're just whipping stuff off the board you know they're looking to take the knight off the board with the bishop and stuff so that it's doubling the pawns and it's not saying that it's a winning thing but you see that quite a lot where it's like oh well they're taking it just because it's caused a bit of damage you know in terms of pawn structure in terms of getting towards the end game so I've got to bear that in mind as to well okay doubling the pawns might work if you've got your rooks already in place and they're ready and set but the early part of the game, it can cause a little bit of disruption. But you'll have to see how you're used to what you're used to um, doing. So we push through the center, looking to open up the center. So they gladly open up for us. And yep, yeah, that's fine. So taking with the knight, can't really see that being a problem. Taking with the queen, because the bishop is in front of the um, queen, their queen. Instantly, my brain's thinking, oh, do they have a check on our king? But they don't so you could take with the queen but what does that do for us could take with the queen he can just hit us with the pawn queen's dancing around a little bit it's not a very nice position for it to be in so i think taking with the knight get castled what do they have bishop coming here attacking the queen little things like that okay take maybe the bishop comes or maybe the pawn pushes down onto the knight but i think the bishop puts a check on the king wants to disrupt our pawn structure gets his bishop here so we can't go along uh, short castling little things like that i mean that's potentially what they could do isn't it we go there, take there. I think we'll just bring the knight back. So they have the annoying x-ray through onto our queen. But it does give us time to get castled, I believe. Yeah, nothing to worry about. Let's lock that in. Five. So this is number five. Dun, dun, dun. Let's go here. Bishop takes on the rook. Knight takes, take the bishop, simplified. So it should really peter out to be a draw. Focused on bringing the knight here. I'm hoping that they go back and then we can go and get the rook. It's not going to happen like that, but stranger things have happened because the thing is, he'll just take the pawn. So we're going to need to bring this rook here supporting. Don't think we'll get time to do this. We can do it, but we're not going to get the impact that we wanted. We're just probably going to bring the rook here supporting. Or move the book back but not forgetting he does have his own knight could come here so let's just bring this rook here supporting with the idea that we're wanting to ideally get this and get that but that's not going to happen but you never know the space is available for us to attempt it so let's lock that in All right four more so this is number four Let's go back, let's go back. And I can feel myself going fast again. So I don't need to go fast, just take time. I'm not I'm not the only one that this happens to. You can tell on some of the games that we do play uh, where the opponent looks like they've been playing a blitz match or a bullet match and they've made like a quick game, a quick move. Um, and then you look at it and you go, 
I understand why they made that move, but it's like it looks like a mouse, you know, a mouse slip. And in a long play game, you know, you can't really mouse slip. And that's when you're playing on the bus or you're playing in the taxi or you just you're playing in, in your break or whatever it is, and you're not really fully concentrating. And that's what it looks like. At the end of it, it looks like a mouse slip, and you, you know, you, you think, oh my gosh, you had three days to think of that move and you made that move. <laughs> anyway. Let's crack on. Rook takes and then castled. We didn't want the knight jumping here. So they're opening up or blocking. What are they blocking? Blocking the knight from jumping, I think. That's the only reason I can see that that's been done. So we brought the rook up now, attacking their knight because it's got no protection expecting the bishop to drop here or to here whichever and they do drop there and we have then had the idea of if we take the knight off the board then the bishop takes then the rook can lean on the bishop but then obviously we're thinking well that's all well and good but the bishop can just come here and where does the rook go from there because then if we did do that we'd have to move attack the knight but the knight's got freedom to move we're almost kind of locking our rook in because the bishop's holding that in although their rooks aren't linked up we wouldn't be able to get away with bringing the rook here to come across the back because the bishop is blocking this square so we need to hang fire on that and probably bring this here one of the key things is remembering that the knight can block we do have our knight here at the minute but if the bishop takes and the bishop's here and the bishop's on there and if the knight did move we would be able to take but the pawn can take and it's kind of splitting our rooks up because the bishop's defending we'd have to move the knight attacking the pawn which would give us a bit of freedom to come here their bishop will probably end up taking this pawn Right, so that's the big picture. And the little picture is obviously just bringing the rook here now, looking to double up as best possible. All those little tricks can happen, knight can come here. Yeah, I think we're locking in, just keeping simple ownership of the file as best possible anyway. Let's lock that in. This is number three. So. Uh, Last one to go for. Let's go here. Right, so they've captured. Knight's attacking the pawn. Oh, it's yeah. You know that I know they're sneaking because we've already done this one. We've already done this one. Okay, but we're all, we're doing two more. That is it. After this one, because like I said, we could be doing this all day with them just creeping in. Oh, in fact, I could really just stop now because we've done this already. But we're going to just do two more after this. So we pushed this pawn so that we could um, eventually look to take this pawn off the board if it wasn't defended, but it's going to be defended with something. And it's not been defended. It's not been defended, but at least Maybe they're making space for their queen to come here and do something. Because we're going, to, we're looking to take this. Unfortunately, we can't jump here because the bishop's there. Has it anything changed? Because that's our focal point on taking here, and it just feels so poisonous. It's unreal. So we take queen. Then says, "Nope, thank you very much. Maybe, nope." Thank you very much, I'm coming in here. But he doesn't have anything else supporting that unless his knight is coming in, in, but it gets taken. I think we just take, I'm locking in that maneuver. The knight doesn't have, just run back by me again. The knight doesn't have any protection, so the queen can still attack, but the knight can take, can't come here. It can go here because that's where the pawn was 
So maybe that's what they're going to do. So we take and the queen comes here, attacking the knight. This pawn doesn't have any protection, so we could take this pawn and attack the rook and the bishop. Does he have a magic magic position with his queen in front of our king? No, because his dark square bishop's blocked and his white square bishop's blocked. So I think we'll lock the in definitely. Two more. This is the second to last. Yeah, and we've done this one before as well. Okay, that's fine. Let's go here. We'll give the explanation about this and maybe we come here. You never can tell because we're, we're expecting them to do this, but they didn't do that, did they? They pushed, pushed, and they moved the rook instead, so they didn't actually charge down. But they're protecting this pawn first. So it's a horse of a different colour. We can still bring the bishop here, but we still got the x-ray through to their queen, so they might forget themselves. You never know. It does happen. Does that allow us to do anything with any of our pieces? Don't think there's any point bringing this, attacking this, because the pawn's just going to drop and hit it. And even if we brought it here, it just pushes down and blocks the bishop. This is one of those non-positions. I want to try and make them better. Let's um, queen here. I want to try and get in front of his king somehow. Maybe we'll bring the bishop here and bring the knight here and do it that way. Some, some sort of activity. Or do we just bring the rook here, bring the bishop here? We never get that off. Keep mentioning every time, don't we? Bring this here, push the pawn up trying to get the bishop here. Sometimes we do, but there's a lot of stuff that goes on. I think moving the bishop, it comes here. Just try and squish the area a bit. Now this starts square bishop in a bit. I think moving the bishop, yeah. I'm locking in moving in the bishop because nothing appears to be happening at the minute. Yeah, he might try and jump the knight down. Yeah. And the last one. The last one is... So this is like an almost... This is like an hour that we've been doing this. An hour and something. So you can see how it can just keep on going and going because they, you know, they will, they will respond. Right, what we got here. So we've got a two on one with the rook and the bishop. But we can't take because he's got a two on one with his king and his rook. So we're trying to go for the basics. Uh, but they've moved the king out of the way. They've moved the king out of the way because we were going to look to double up. But we don't need to do that now. So we could hit with the. Um, Rook can go for a rook exchange. Bishop takes. What do we just take with the bishop? Take with the bishop or on his rook. He has to do something, but then that's bringing. He's then going to double up, isn't he? So we we'll go there. We hit. He comes down. Bring the. Oh, in fact, bring the pawn with a check. Bring the pawn with a check on the king. He's got many places to go. He can go down, he can go here, he can go here. If he goes down. I'd want to be getting rid of my pawns, wouldn't I? If he goes down. Hit him with this pawn. Yes, I think he'll go here, won't he? He goes there, hit him with this pawn, he takes. Then the rook can come in and put a check on, maybe. I think that's that looks more doable, doesn't it? Watch, it's not gonna end up anything like that. I think we're gonna go with this. We're locking this in. 
and try and squish the king unless of course he just moves backwards but let's take with the bishop and that's it that's my practice for going forward for the next eight weeks long play games i've got all the short play games hopefully out of my system so i, I shouldn't be playing them now for the next eight weeks anyway just pure long play games minimum is going to be 10 minutes and even there i might even have to put like an increment in just to um, bump it up a bit so i get give myself a bit more time don't need to be rushing try and focus on better strategies and placement of the pieces and just give that overall quality time to the game so that's it for now 